One common question I've been asked by many of you out there who have short-term obligations like saving up for a wedding, renovation, or a BTO flat that is coming up, should you put a pause to your investments and just save up for that short-term obligation? Instead of saving or investing, why not do both together, save and also invest? So in today's video, I'm going to share with you a little bit more about why you should do both together. Let's get straight into today's video. Let's go. Many of us out there are only relying on one source of income and that is our day job. From 9 to 6, we get a monthly salary and from that monthly salary, we will allocate accordingly to our fixed expenses like paying for insurance, our food, public transportation, etc. And from that, you can also determine how much can you save every single month. And through that lump sum of savings working towards your short-term goal, can you then allocate, let's say, $50 a month or $100 a month to invest? And the reason for actually still continue investing despite having to save save up for the short-term obligation that you have is because you don't want your money to be eat up by inflation and time in the market is better than timing the market and according to Albert Einstein compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world he who understands it earns it he who doesn't pays it let's show you a real example of how doable it is to just invest a hundred dollars a month while still saving up for your big obligations that's coming up in the short term I take home a salary of roughly about three thousand dollars and my fixed expenses is at six hundred and ninety five $5.27. My variable expenses is at $700. So if you take $3,000 and you minus $1,400 just by allocating to my fixed expenses and also my variable expenses, I would have been left with $1,600. And if I just allocate $100 a month into investing into something like the S&P 500 index fund for free, no cost if I use Scythe Trade, I would have invested $1,200. And from there, you can see that I will have $1,600 minus $100 every single month at $1,500 times 12, you'll be saving $18,000 yearly. And that is very doable. If you are able to save and still invest, you will be getting $1,200 invested into the S&P 500. And you would have started earlier than many others who have put a pause to their investments just because they are saving up for their short-term obligations. Just to emphasize how significant a $100 investment can be over a long period of time, take a look at this post by Red Race Breakout on Instagram. And in Instagram account that I follow on investing. Investing just $50 a month at a 10% return on investment. After a period of 30 years, you will have $113,000. This is the significance of having consistently investing $50 a month for a period of 30 years. And let's say you invest $100 a month. After a period of 30 years, you will have $226,000. This is how significant it can be. Investing a small amount today will become something huge in the next 20 to 30 years. And this is the power of compounding. Never belittle the small amount that you're starting with today. This is why I say that you can still save and also invest at the same time. It doesn't have to be a huge amount, $50 a month, $100 a month. Now let's go into how you can actually allocate the amount that you have saved up over the number of years. Where should you allocate it? Is it just a normal savings account earning you a mere 0.05%? Let's go into that right now. If you're using high interest savings account like UOB1 or OCBC360 where you are earning a rate of 3.25% or 3.85% and fulfill requirements like salary crediting, spending with them or saving with them, then yes, continue using those accounts because they are giving you a relatively high interest rates as of today. But what if for those of you out there who are looking for alternatives, you can't see, let's say, a huge amount of $20,000 sitting in the bank and you're afraid that you'll be spending them away. Then there are other alternatives to look at like fixed deposits with different banks if not with stash away simple guarantee. Stash away simple guarantee is something like a fixed deposit where you can place an amount with them, no minimum, no maximum for a period of six months and the placement is with Citibank. You will earn a rate of 3.5% when you lock in the amount for a six months period. Take a look at this article by Grow Green Sprout where they compiled the list of the different fixed deposits available from the different banks and if you take a look at the minimum amount that you need to place into these fixed deposits, RHB Bank minimum amount is $20,000. Maybank is $22,000. Bank of China is $5,000. The rate is at 3.5% as well. HSBC minimum is $30,000 for a rate of 3.5%. The period that you need to actually lock in your money is for a period of 3 months with HSBC. If you compare all these fixed deposits available with the banks directly, the minimum amount is usually pretty high. But with Stash Away Simple Guaranteed, they are giving you the option of no minimum amount, no maximum amount as well, and there's no fees involved, and you are getting a rate of 3.5% 
which is very close to the fixed deposits directly offered with the bank. Stash Away is a digital wealth manager that offers investment portfolios and cash management solutions on their platform. Stash Away Simple Guaranteed is their third cash management solution and it offers a guaranteed 3.5% per annum. This lock-in period is for a period of 6 months. Regardless of whether you start today, you want to put $500 in there, lock it away for 6 months. Thereafter, you decided that you want to put more, you can then create another one and lock in another fixed deposit with them for a period of 6 months at the rate of 3.5%. If you want to sign up, you can check the link down in the description box below. When you sign up and you place an amount into the simple guarantee, you can actually get a $10 sign up rewards with this link link down in the description box below. If you're afraid that you keep it in a normal savings account, you can anytime get access and spend it away, then Stash Away Simple Guaranteed is a good alternative where you can lock it away for a period of 6 months and still earn you a 3.5%, no minimum, no maximum amount. They are also licensed by MAS if that is what you're worried about. And if you're asking, is there any fees involved by placing your amount into Stash Away Simple Guaranteed? There's no fees, no management fees at all. So whatever you get is just 3.5% after a period of 6 months placing your amount with Stash Away Simple Guaranteed. An alternative, if you do not want to look at fixed deposits, you can also look at the Singapore Savings Bond. Singapore Savings Bond is giving you 2.82% for the July batch, where you can lock in these rates for a period of 10 years. And high interest rates environment will never be around for that long. So this is one alternative that you can also look at. If you are thinking, will you be locked in for the period of 10 years? No, redeeming a Singapore Savings Bond is pretty easy. I have a video talking about how to actually go into the Singapore Savings Bond, things that you should take note of I'll link up above and also down below. Another alternative is treasury bills offered by the Singapore government. As of the last batch, they're giving 3 over percent, which is also relatively high. A period of either 6 months or 1 year. This is how you can actually allocate your short-term savings goal. Never use the amount that you want to keep for the next 2 to 3 years or 5 years into the stock market. Don't use the amount to invest because you never really know whether the stock market will be at a high or at a low. Don't risk the fact that you actually need the amount in the next 5 years. And if any stock that you have invested in to is in the red. You don't want to have to sell it just to raise some capital that you need to pay for an obligation. So this is the entire video on whether should you still save and also invest should you have any short-term obligations coming up. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. Any questions that you might have, leave it down in the comment section below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.